How's it going everybody? In our next video, we're gonna be taking a look at a newer feature on ASA, but a feature that's been on iOS for quite some time now, known as the IPsec VTI or Virtual Tunnel Interface. The cool thing about this is it allows ASA to finally tunnel traffic. So it's not a GRE tunnel, it's a IPsec IPv4 tunnel, which is kind of uncharacteristic, but you know, it's definitely does work. So we're going to do this between CSR3 and ASA1 because we're already doing GRE over IPsec. So unfortunately, we won't be able to do any routing over the connection because of the fact that um, there's no multicast configuration peering. So for example, if we were to run CSR3 to ASA1 and do EIGRP or anything like that, any IGP uh, multicast wouldn't work. So it's going to be a static route. So instead of doing static routes, I'm going to do BGP and then do some route propagation that way. So let's go ahead and get the configuration started. So I'm going to bring this down just a little bit and make sure that we have our peerings are still good to go. I'm going to go back to CSR3 and do a show IP EIGRP neighbor and show IP BGP summary. Beautiful. So they're still both up and running and good to go. So what I'm going to do now is on CSR3, I'm going to go to global config and we have to do the IPv2 setup like we just did, like we did with the first iteration with the crypto map, except for this time we're going to be tying it to the uh, VTI tunnel. So we'll go ahead and get that guy squared away. So the configuration itself is actually going to be pretty straightforward. So do show run section Ike v2. We're just going to have to create a pre-shared key implementation and go from there. So we'll first start off with the uh, pre-shared key or the, the key ring. So crypto Ike v2 key ring. And we're going to type this Ike v2 underscore CSR3 ASA1 key ring. We'll type in the peer is going to be AS um, will be ASA one. The address will be eleven dot zero dot zero dot eleven, and the pre share key local will be CSR three. Pre share key remote will be ASA one. We'll go ahead and get out of there. Next thing we need to do is uh, we have the transform set. Right, the transform set's already um, squared away. We're gonna go and create the uh, the profile first. So crypto ikev2 profile is gonna be ikev2 underscore csr3 underscore asa1 profile. And we're gonna specify the, um, the authentication local will be free share key. The authentication remote will be free share key. The match identity remote will be address of 11.0.0.11 slash 32. And then we'll do the, because that was match, we'll do the identity local will be address of uh, 31.0.0.3. And we are uh, the key ring in this case here will be local and we'll specify the key ring up here, which is this guy right there. So there we have that. So now we're in good shape. The next step that I'm going to go through is crypto IPsec profile is going to be IP2 ASA1 profile. Set the transform set of v 2 T set. And then set the IV the IV2 profile to be this guy right here, the CSR3 ASA1 profile. We have that. And then I'm gonna go type in interface tunnel. In this case here it's gonna be, I'll do 13. Uh, the tunnel source will be gig one. The tunnel destination will be 11.0.0.11. .0 the IP address in this case will be 10.3.11.3 slash 24 and then the tunnel mode will be IPsec IPv4 and the tunnel protection will be IPsec profile and then 
IP1 ASA1, or sorry, IP2 ASA1 profile, like that. So now I get to go and do the router BGP3 neighbor of 10.3.11.11.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
we will look at the show route. I will go ahead and do redistribute EIGRP show run pipe and pipe include router. Redistribute EIGRP one and I'll type in router EIGRP one redistribute BGP eleven of the metric of some high value just like that. So now what will end up happening is on CSR3 I will I should see on CSR7 show IP route I should see traffic coming in for 10.8 which I do right there. So let me just validate that the show run policy map that ICMP is being inspected, which it is. So now I should be able to go to CSR 7 and on CSR 8, I should show IP route VRF S11 and I see a bunch of routes coming in. I see 10.1, 10.1.1, 10.1.2, etc. I see a bunch of routes coming in for the stuff that I need to have reachability towards. So now if I go to CSR 7 and I do a trace route, um, I'll do a ping first. Uh, ping to 10. 8.11.8 sourcing from loopback 0 I can ping across which is great now if I did a trace route to that same destination and I do it numerically I believe it's going to fail it'll hit 8 oh I did it, it jumped right across so I went to 3 then it jumped across to 8 but you'll notice that in the, the configuration you notice how the ASA is transparent. It doesn't actually show up. That's because the ASA by default does not decrement the TTL from the um, the light the from the the trace route. So in case you didn't know that, whenever you send a trace route out, the traffic goes out, and for every layer three hop that you pass through, the TTL is decremented by one. Right. What will end up happening is the Trace route will actually go and send an IP unreachable back, ICMP unreachable message. And that unreachable is how the the hops in a trace route are calculated and the, the millisecond timers and all that type of stuff. So by default, the ASA does not partic participate in that. So if I was to get out of here and do a show run policy map, go all the way down here, you can see that there's nothing here. So if I was to go to the uh, policy map global and global policy and type in class class dash default underneath here if I was to type in here uh, to set the connection to decrement TTL right here and that what will end up happening now if I go back to 7 and try to retrace uh, okay this time it's not working so what should happen is oh there it goes the ASA should now show up in the in the in the trace route. It's still um, there's still still not quite 100 percent there, but that's basically how you would go about doing that. So normally you would not do that. You want the ASA not to be um, visible at all. But in this case here, it worked out. Let me try that one more time. See if it's get a different experience. Yeah, it's not going to show up at all. That's okay though. I'm I'm not terribly worried about that. The point being is that we have connectivity through the device, which is what we wanted to have. So that's what I wanted you guys to see. That is an, a VTI tunnel. So let's actually go onto CSR3 and take a look at how this works. So let's do a show crypto IV2 SA. We have our connection up, but if we look at the show crypto IPsec SA peer to 11.0.0.11, .11, and we look at the details, You'll notice that when we look at this, if we were to look at, for example, let's do, I want the pipe include peer, pipe include PKTS, pipe include ident. Um, oops, I need to get rid of the peer. One thing that I want you to pay attention to is you can very easily tell which ones are 
GRE tunnels and which ones are not. So the way I want you to be able to interpret this is when I'm looking at the connection to CSR6, this is a GRE tunnel. We can tell that because in this little section right here, we have protocol 47. In this one here, we have protocol 47. If, I, if you keep wondering why I keep popping in, um, I have to use the Alt key to come and go. And um, you have to press Alt in order to get this to work. So, and you'll notice that right here, that there is, in this little section right here, there is no zero. Specifically, that right there. There is no 47. So it's raw IP encapsulation. But it's routed raw, uh, raw IP encapsulation, which makes it actually easier to work with. Now, in this case here, because I have an IPsec, IPv4 connection, if I wanted to do, this wouldn't be supported on, uh, on ASA anyway, but on a router, if I wanted to do site-to-site -site connectivity like a DMVPN phase three, this would not work. You have to be using GRE. But I wanted to demo that at least a little bit to show you what that would look like and get that working. Now, normally you wouldn't use BGP. You could use static routing as well. I chose to use BGP because I prefer dynamic routing. I can't really stand uh, static routing. To me, it's a waste of time in most environments unless it makes sense. But in a very large environment, that's what you're going to see. So you might as well get comfortable with using routing protocols. I'm comfortable with them, obviously. So with that being said, thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with me in this video, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.